Hello, I'm here to introduce the concept of research and development investment in the context of intellectual capital for a company. If you want to know more about the theory behind intellectual capital and R&D investment, please go to Active Guide and search for intellectual capital and you will see two documents. The first one is the theory behind it. You can click and it will put up, pull up the uh, PowerPoint. This was uh, introduced by Dr. Christine Contessaro from Deakin University and Dr. Edwin Lim from the same university. This is a result of a collaboration between Monsoon Sim and Deakin. And if you go through this PowerPoint, you will see the theory behind the concept. RK and the importance in it as far as the education value that it can provide to the learners, to your learners. Okay, and that is the uh, theory. And then if you like to know more, you can click the uh, worksheet, which will pull out the uh, calculation behind the determination of the uh, net present value of all the projects, the R&D projects that the student will be uh, asked to evaluate. Okay, so how are we going to and uh, how are we going to simulate all this in Monsoon Sim? So, and the answer is it can be done quite easily. And we, have, we are here to demonstrate how we're doing it, okay? So first of all, in the finance menu, you should see a new sub-menu called R&D Development Allow. And you can read more about it here. Uh, I've turned it on. It's defaulted to be no, but now I've made it yes. So it is in play. So let's see what the student will see. So suppose I am FASIM. I'm going to click FASIM and open up FASIM's screen as a learner. If I go to my finance, I will see a new menu called R&D. By clicking this, then here's a story. And the story is that our CEO is looking to increase our future value by investing in R&D. Okay, so here's the context. Now, here are a few R&D projects being considered. So here are the projects. Okay. Your job is to make sure that we invest in a project that are projected to bring us the best return. Okay. So that's how we simulate this and that's how the learners learn by carefully selecting the project to invest in. Note, and this is important. A project with negative net present value will be deemed total failure and will be written off as expense. Okay, so here's the risk for the learners. They have to pick it carefully and the required rate of return currently is set at 15%. Okay, so here are the projects that is available that are available to the, to the learners. Project A, B, C, D, E. Okay, project A could be, you know, invest in 5G technology. Uh, project B could be, you know, invest in robotics, what, something like that. Um, now, for project A, there are two expenditure, expenditure here. The research part and the development part. And they are two distinct components, yeah? And the budgeted years, six years, and this project, once you have made the investment, it will be evaluated in 15 days. Okay, based on the simulation in Monsoon Sim. So what are the projected inflows? Okay, the inflows are $200, uh, sorry, 200,000, 200, uh, 400 on the second year, and so on, and so on, and so on. These are the projected inflows. So if you make the right choice, uh, then you will get a positive return in terms of net present value. If you make the wrong one, then you will risk being 
uh, total failing project and it will be totally written off by your CEO. So facing this, that these choices, the student has to calculate the NPV. Okay, how to calculate? Then you should go back to the uh, worksheet that we talked about earlier. Okay, you can go through these two PowerPoint and you should understand the concept behind it. So, assuming that we're playing the game now and the students are were to, to make the choice. So let's run this game, okay? Right, so now I'm going to run the game. And I'm going to run a uh, fast game. Uh, and I'm going to run for 30 days. Okay, so let's go. So the game is running. And these learners facing these choices. So let's say this learner picks uh, project B, which is actually a failed project, okay, based on the net present value. Okay, we'll see how it is being set up later okay but for now from the angle of the learner uh suppose he doesn't understand the concept well about the uh, calculation of return and he pick it randomly and then let's suppose he picked this project project b and then these are the outflow research and development and he approves it suppose then he is incurring this much money for research and after that, this much money for development. So let's take a look at the PNL impact right now. So from the PNL point of view, he has already incurred a research cost, a research expenses into the amount of 440,000, right? Which is as predicted here, 440,000. Okay. So then on 15 days, the learner has to wait for the evaluation by the CEO and see what happened. Okay. Now, if you go to the transaction list, now we are pending evaluation. It should be out by day 21. And let's see. Okay. The outcome. In the meantime, let's consider, let's check out our balance sheet. Um, there's no intangible asset here. Nothing. Okay. And everything looks quite normal. And again, the only impact so far we have is the research cost that's already being booked. All right, 440,000. Now let's see what happened to the 880,000, okay, on day 21. Now remember, I have chosen project B randomly, okay? And suppose I uh, assume that I don't know how to calculate the net present value, then I will be risking uh, a, a, a total loss because it may be a bad project. All right, so let's see. So now is day 15. Let's wait a few more days. Day 20. Day 21. Okay, let's see. Ah, okay, so the evaluation completes and it turns out that this looks like a bad project because the entire R and D research and development have been expensed. Okay, so I'm taking a big hit here. All right, because it's all expense and I do not have any intangible asset. Okay, nothing here. And I don't have any income. The inflow is all cancelled, it's all written off. Okay, so it's a failed project. That's because the net present value, if you calculate this based on this, is actually, you see, based on this, is actually negative. Now I'm going to pick project one, which I know has a positive uh, net present value based on the formula. Okay, that. If I if I uh, if I go through the worksheet, I will learn the formula and I'll know. Okay, so now I'm going to reset this particular uh, simulation. I'm going to go back to day one, but now I'm going to change something. I'm going to make the evaluation day quicker. All right. So instead of 15 days, 
I'm going to make it uh, 10 days. So it's quicker. All right. So that's the evaluation day. Now let's continue this, run this game again from day zero. This time, I'm going to select a positive net present value project, which, is, which I know is project A. Okay. I'll tell you how I know later. Okay. But for now, trust me, I know that it is project A. So I'm going to click this invest in project A. Okay, so approve. So now I will incur expense of the research part the following day after I made the, made the uh, commitment, commit to do the investment. So the research part 350 is in. Okay, that's the amount planned out here. Now let's wait until the evaluation day is complete, which is going to be day 14. All right, so approved day is three. The research fund is committed on day four, and now I'm waiting for the day 14. See what happened. Okay, so now day seven, day eight. Remember, the earlier example that I used, I used project B and I ended up expensing both the research part and the development part. And I did not get any tangible asset because it was failed project. Day 14. There you go. Okay, so you completed. All right, the development fund has been committed. Day 14. And where does the development go? Based on the IFRS um practice the development is now considered development an intangible asset okay it's not expense so if i look at my expense i should uh in my profit and loss i should only incur the research cost the De development cost now it's ended up as my asset okay there you go and not only that my expected inflow should come in right there should be an expected inflow which is this this guy right here first year income two hundred thousand should be in my profit and loss also okay so not only i have um, successfully um uh, build up some intang intangible asset uh, i also start to enjoy the return okay the first year return so if you compare by my net profit from the earlier one, then it is uh, a whole lot better because of, and not only from a PNL point of view, and also, but also from the balance sheet point of view. Okay, because of this intangible asset. Now, as a teacher, then you may say, okay, so how do I determine the net profit value if I'm a teacher? Right, I don't have time to calculate all this, so it's easy. Uh, if you come to your menu, if you click this, you go to the R&D, right? Here are the setup for project one, project two, project three, project four, project five, right? The title of the project, you can change this, okay? Now, here's the NPV. It's actually hidden because you might not want to show it to the student. So if you click here, it is actually positive NPV, and this one is negative NPV, and this is positive, and this is negative, right? If you want to change this, it's easy. Just reset the game to day zero, okay? So let's say you want to change this the next time around. You want to make it uh, more dynamic. You want to uh, uh, let the student uh, recalculate everything, easy. Just come here. Well, first of all, determine whether you want your return to be 15 or 10% or 20. Up to you. Say I want to be 10, then 10%. That's right. So now the NPV has changed. Now, suppose I want to edit this. Then I say, okay, I want, to re you know, I want it to be 380,000. I want it to be five years. And my first year, I want it to be 300,000. And then subsequently, I want it to be increased or decreased by whatever. So let's say I pick decrease by 10%. And then that's my 
NPV. Okay, so it's still positive, 180,000. Okay, so you can freely change this, and then the student will then uh, be presented with a new value. Of course, we don't share the uh, net, net NPV here because they have to do their calculation, and that's where they learn. Yeah, so as a teacher, we have already done it for you. You can all you have to do is just click and take a peek here. All right, now. So that is to cover the teacher's part and then the student part. Now, next question is, how are we going to incentivize the student to, to invest in um, R&D? Okay, one of the ways to incentivize them in a game is to set up a scoring matrix that involve intangible asset. So why don't you just click to uh, come here Let's say you set up a uh, finance and you say, okay, I want that profit, but I also want to look at your intangible development asset. Okay, so that is my KPI. So once you set that, let's say 50%, 50%, then obviously, uh, okay, it's not. So once you do that, then the student will be uh, incentivized to do the R&D investment. Otherwise, they are not going to get any point for this, right? Or if they pick the wrong project, which will be written off, that's even worse, okay? So here's where the gamification parts come in, right? To make it, to simulate the, uh, the competitiveness and also to make it, the, to gamify the entire uh, learning process. All right? So I, um, in summary, we have, and in, we have actually uh, simulated the entire uh, concept that is discussed in these two particular theory, uh, PowerPoint. We have uh, uh, and, encapsulated in Monsoon Sim in this simple simulation. Okay, I hope you uh, see the value of the uh, of the, the the new feature. Uh, I hope you can use it in your class in your curriculum. And I'm sure from now on, teaching NPV value and teaching investment uh, in R&D would be very, very simple and easy. Thank you.